We're ready. Thank you. Welcome to the regular meeting of Hamilton City Council. It's November the 8th, 2023 at 6.03. We're in City Council Chambers at 345 High Street here in Hamilton. We do have one public hearing this evening it's regarding license fees for food establishments um, and uh, food service operations. Um, let's do a roll call, please. Pullman. Present. Fear. Present. Vaughn. Present. Ryan. Present. Nab. Present. Lauer. Present. Moeller. Present. We have a quorum. We're going to start off in offering a prayer. Councilmember Tim Nab, called by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please do if you are able. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather tonight in the work of the City of Hamilton. We are dedicated to our very purposeful business plan in leading our city in continued safety, growth, and posterity for our residents and businesses we serve. Thank you for your guidance to all city officials and administration, along with all city departments, staff, and amazing volunteers who work together to make Hamilton the great city we are and will continue to be. This evening, we congratulate our re-elected city council members as we continue our work in 2024 and beyond. Lord, bless all armed, force service, all armed forces service members in service to our country, all first responders in service to our city, county, and state, keeping us safe and assisting in times of need. Please watch over every one of them. Hold a special place for our veterans and all those who have served our nation, as well as all those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to keep our country free, as we honor and celebrate Veterans Day this Saturday, November 11th. Most importantly, Creator, we thank you for your countless daily blessings. We pray these petitions in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we do have uh, two special presentations this evening. And the first one, I believe, is about the train depot. Rich Angle? Good evening, Mayor, Council, citizens of Hamilton. I'm Rich Engel, Director of Engineering in the uh, Department of in Infrastructure. And uh, I hope you've seen some of the activity that's going on at the train depot for the last week. Uh, we had our traffic signal crew there removing the extraneous wire conduit and other miscellaneous items off the buildings. Uh, I know they removed the gutter that had been hanging down. Also, the uh, resident services department have been there and did clean up on the, uh, we had a pile of, of uh, paving brick that also included dirt that had been removed from the uh, site, the original site. They were uh, cleaning that up and stacking the brick up. We also had the chimneys uh, that had been removed previously returned. So they've been a lot of activity getting the site cleaned up and my intent is to uh, have those brick moved inside the single story building if possible just to provide some added protection. But for tonight, uh, I want to talk about the uh, purchase order and the uh, change order that's being processed for LRT. If you recall, they were the company that did the uh, foundations for us. And they're a um, historic building renovation company as well. So we've asked them to give us a price. It's a little under $500,000. It stays within our budget. And with that, they're going to start work in the near future later this month on this uh, work on the two-story building. We have to rebuild the masonry adjacent to the roof before any of the roofing can be replaced. They're also going to repair and replace the roof rafters and the soffit on the building, install new underlayment and install asphalt shingles install new gutters, rebuild the masonry facade where it's been damaged, replace brick as needed, and then remove graffiti. 
We had talked to resident services about removing graffiti, but with the historic structure and the brick being uh, sensitive, let's say, uh, we were una they were unable and not willing to take that work on and take that risk on, so we're going to have uh, LRT perform that work. And then on the single story building, they're going to repair, replace the soffit as needed on the building. It's in better shape because uh, that asphalt shingle had been replaced uh, previously. And so there's, uh, there's some damage, but not as much as in the uh, two story. Repair, replace the roof rafters and the soffit at the southwest corner. That was the corner that CSX had cut off in order to allow their trains to pass by it in its original location. Repair underlayment as needed, install new asphalt shingles, install new gutters, replace brick as needed, and also remove graffiti. In addition, on both buildings, we're going to uh, have resident services remove the existing wood bracing and plywood from the windows and install clear plastic, I'm calling it sheeting, but it's actually more of a, like a plexiglass type material in the window openings as men, many as possible. There may be some that we will not do, and those will be painted, as well as the large door openings will be painted as well. We're going to select a paint that's going to match the brick color as much as we can, just so that it blends in as much as possible. Um, also, ooh, that's not very apparent. Uh, <clears throat> I've updated the schedule, and uh, the ones I want to talk about right now is um, we're continuing to remove the construction debris and take care of the construction debris from the site, relocate doors and windows inside the buildings, continue to mow and weed control the site, install the plastic windows, and that will be done starting later this month through the end of December. It'll probably take them a few weeks to get the material ordered and then uh, delivered and start construction. And then by the middle of this month, we expect uh, LRT to begin their construction and I've got their schedule up here too as well. I will, uh, as always, create a PDF of this information and, and forward that to you in the morning so you have that in more detail and can look more closely at it. LRT will not ex uh, complete their work until the end of uh, April of 2024. Uh, the primary reason is they have to get the masonry rebuild done in order to, before they can be, begin the roofing and then uh, the structural replacement of the roof rafters and timbers have to be done as well. And in talking with them, they've indicated that because of the um, wood timbers that were used on the roof rafters, remember these buildings were built in the 1800s, it's a much more solid, dense wood than you would find today. So um, the beams in the both, well, at least in the two-story building, we looked at more closely. Uh, those are oak beams, so we don't anticipate much damage to the existing beams, even with the roof being open. We are going to get some plywood and cover those openings just to provide additional protection. But really, inside the buildings, there's nothing that the water's been damaging anyway. We've got uh, gravel floors in the buildings. We did not put a floor slab in in order because we didn't know what was actually going to be uh, used for the buildings. And with that, I know that was a quick synopsis. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Rich. Next presentation. This will be a engineering update from our traffic operations manager, Scott Hoover. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. I'm here to give an update on the New London Road, a South Washington intersection um, regards, with regards to permanent temporary traffic solutions. Uh, I think before we get started for, the, for actually what we're looking at for permanent and the temporary solutions, I think it's important to discuss the, um, where we started and where we're at today. Uh, we received an initial complaint it was like in winter of 2021 regarding the intersection being unsafe. At that time, internally, we analyzed the intersection and found there was an increase in crashes and some other factors that we wanted to have a third party consultant take a look at it. Um, and at this time, the, we were involved in the uh, traffic signal project 
very heavily. So um, at that time, we um, contracted with TEC Engineering to conduct an intersection safety study at that time. Um, the analysis, it was about a year long. Um, the results of that study were that there was a crash issue on the side street, which is South Washington. Um, we had a delay issue also on South Washington. And, and a lot of that was due to a site distance <coughs> issue uh, along New London at South Washington. Um, during that time, we were also communicating and attending the neighborhood, uh, the New London neighborhood meetings uh, to communicate where we were at in the process. Um, the last meeting was September 19th. Uh, I think we went to four or five of those throughout that time frame. Also, during that same time, we were conducting different surveys to get the opinion of the public as to what they were experiencing in that area. Uh, the, new, the neighborhood group put out a, a uh, survey to about 2,000 people in that vicinity, um, as well as there were comments on the North Hamilton Crossing survey regarding that intersection. And then, of course, uh, Hamilton City School District has expressed their concern with that intersection, as well as the Hamilton Police Department, all having concerns with safety at the intersection. Um, the increase in annual crashes is why we're having this discussion today and why we've been having the discussion. Um, there's eight crashes in the last 19 months. Uh, five, six of those eight are injury crashes. So we do have a problem, and we have to do something to address that problem. So permanent solutions. At this point, um, we are uh, completing a grant funding application uh, for the construction of a roundabout. It's estimated at approximately $3 million, construction 2027. We, that application is due March of 2024. Uh, we would find out if we, receive, if we received funding approximately September, October of 2024. In the meantime, we have to, there's a t we have to, we have to do a, t there's a temporary solution that has to happen out there. We're having too, the crash frequency is too high and we have to do something about it. Um, first option is what I'm recommending as well as engineering is to eliminate left and through movements from the side street. So Elmwood and South Washington, the only thing you could do is turn right. Again, we don't want to do any of these solutions, but we have to do something. Um, this solution is a low cost uh, solution that we could implement fairly quickly with a delineator system. Um, uh, it's again, my, uh, you could have an issue initially with uh, people going through the neighborhood. I mean, I know that's a that's a uh, that's something that would be brought up. But I, we ran these um, different areas. Um, in, in our vehicles as long as as well as through like the Google Maps system and it's just not a great option to go through the neighborhood so people would adjust their routes uh, but I but I think this is I mean this is what we're recommending as option number one um, and then of course there's a temporary traffic signal solution fifty thousand dollars probably six months or less for installation um, and then an all-way stop control which is stopping everyone. So the, these, are, these are three solutions to help mitigate the left turn crash problem that we have specifically on South Washington at New London. So we're really, I mean, we're coming to you tonight to, to give you this information and to um, get your input, at least by the next council meeting as to your feelings about this. Um, Again, we don't want to do any of these, but it's our duty to, to do to fix this problem. Any questions? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Nab. Scott, could you send us or have that uh, presentation uh, emailed to us, please? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Fear. Scott, what do you mean by we don't want to do any of these? I, we're, we wished we weren't having to deal with oh, a crash okay. problem. All Sorry. Right. Yeah, we, you know, this is just something that we have to do. We know that's an inconvenience to have to restrict different uh, movements, but it's uh, it's something we have to do okay, to, to mitigate that, that left turn pr crash problem. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor Ryan. Uh, Scott, thanks sure. for the information. So on, on the screen, you presented three recommendations. So, I mean, are we going to get, I, I mean, I don't know 
which one's better than the other, which one temporary is more safer than the next one. So, I mean, is, is there a recommendation you guys are going to tell us? Because, I mean, I really wouldn't know. My recommend, I should be yeah, picking. our recommendation is to restrict the left turns from the side okay. streets. Um, site distance is poor, um, and it's it, it until we can get the permanent solution. Again, this is temporary, but in, until right. we can get a permanent solution um, in place, um, we're recommending that option. Um, this option is something that let's just say we put it in play, and we don't like how it's working. It's something we can remove and adjust to at that point. So it's. It's a it's an easy system to install. It's signage, pavement markings, and a, and a delineator system. So, it's very easily to remove and, and try something different. So you'll be monitoring this all along. And, Absolutely. And the, the the crashes. Absolutely. Mr. Uh, Mayor. Yes, Councilmember. Um, Scott, so uh, I believe that you all have met with all four of the residents on the corners there at Elmwood, South Washington, That's and correct. so forth, and they are very supportive of this. Correct. It, of, of the roundabout, the change because of the crashes that are happening. There. Yes, they are very supportive of the roundabout option. You know, they're if you talk to, I mean, it, it's you know they're picking up car parts in their yard and they're just, I mean, they're and and it's the noise levels. Um, that, mm -hmm. Again, the roundabout solution would would help with as well. So they're very excited about something to help mitigate, you know people being in their front yards. So, And then I would assume as you go um, South Washington, as you're coming down, there will have to be directional signs that are things that say no left turn ahead. Correct. So, and then also on Elmwood, although Correct. Elmwood there isn't will be a that heavily signage. traveled. We'd also warn the public mm -hmm. via uh, media releases and message boards out on site, to, you know, plenty enough advance of what's mm -hmm. going on yeah. um, to let them know of the change. Yeah. And currently, there are flashing lights, I think, as you come to that intersection, but they've yeah, been there so long that people right. don't pay attention there's to that anymore. There's amber beacons that are uh, blinking to bring your attention to the intersection warning signs on New London. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. No problem. If I may add, um, so Scott mentioned briefly delineators, and what that means is there'll be um, a physical barrier that restricts any straight or left turn movement it will only allow a right turn movement and the, deline the delineators are um, you'll see them they they're kind of like white sticks that stick up and they're plastic material so essentially those will be those will be installed to prevent any movement other than a right hand turn in including the signage as well perfect yeah that's a great idea because i'm sure they will know there are no police sitting there watching for correct. illegal turns but yeah. that's great thanks thank you and yeah, thank you for Appreciate those delineators they make a lot of sense yeah. At that intersection, yeah. my gosh. Okay. Now go to audience and citizens. Individuals wish to make comments. They may make comments regarding city matters. Um, they may speak now or speak just prior when, to when the uh, item is on the uh, agenda itself. All individuals are required to sign this uh, public speaking book, this blue book. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. And it looks like we have uh, some related questions. Let's talk about the uh, water cove once. Would you like to speak now? Who are here for water cove or wait until the item is on the council floor to be voted on? You, you can do it now if you want to. Yeah. Okay. I'm Bill Maltby, yes. 35 Pond Run Road. Um, i just like to say that uh, Liz Hayden and Ed Wilson did a fantastic job. Uh, they've responded, and council have responded to most of our concerns and made adjustments accordingly uh, and gone out of their way to do it. Uh, my only concern right now, or the residents' only concern, is that, uh, the, as I understand it, the pond that exists is going to be dredged by the city of Hamilton. That one I don't know about. Who knows that? I think the developer's doing that. Oh, okay. <coughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. He said the developer will be the one. The developer's going to do be it. Doing that, yeah. yes. He'll have to get a permit. I imagine that. Dredge it. Whatever is required by the city. Well, we just want to make sure that there's Return. attention paid to the results uh, of doing that. We don't want all the 
dredging to end up down on top of us or down the road, or down the street or something like that. So that would, my concern would be that there would be a permit and maybe a bond and control over how it's done. Can you address that, Alan, just yeah. briefly? Why don't you come to the podium? It would be easier for the record. Alan Messer, Assistant Director of Engineering. Um, there's, there's not any plans necessarily to dredge the pond. The plan is to modify the outlet structures from the pond um, to mitigate. There will be dirt that's kicked up during construction. To mitigate that, they'll have to do different forms of erosion control, like silt fence around it, those kind of things. And you'll see where the water comes out. It's called a skimmer. It's a device, it's a erosion control device that sits on the water so that it doesn't allow that those particles to leave, basically. Okay. It sits on top so stuff isn't <clears throat> rushing directly off and into a pipe. All right, so you, 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 don't, you think that'll take care of everything that we would be concerned about? Yes, well, I mean, we've, we've had other developments of this size and we've, the, if, if done properly, which we will see that it is done properly, it, okay. Thank you it's very not much. a problem. Then. Mr. Mayor, thank you. For Once it. again, thank all of you. You've paid attention to us and done things the way that the whole operation is supposed to work. I appreciate Bill, it. Bill, if you'll stay with us for a minute, I think a few council members well, have Alan, comments. I need Alan. To, I, I agree. Uh, on this one, too. I but, agree. Okay. Um, <laughs> Alan, so we have on the, the pond the developer, they're going to have a maintenance plan for the cleaning. So it doesn't back up, but like to check and make sure that nobody, nothing gets dammed up again. And like, like, like you said, that we had the beavers doing that and damming that. Is, that. is that what they had before? Yes, that, that's what the biggest problem's been before was the beavers. So there'll be a, a couple things. They'll install uh, trash racks to prevent debris from clogging those, those holes where the water leaves. Okay. And there'll also be a, a maintenance plan and then with the development itself, there'll be people on site. That's what I'm most excited about, that somebody's there to watch it. Um, city staff, we take a look at as we drive by and those kind of things. But you know, beavers or anything else, something can very quickly clog that. And with people being on site, there'll be somebody to spot it before it becomes an issue. Okay. And they'll yeah, be, that, they that's are responsible. My understanding is that we were going to have some kind of maintenance plan being done to it. And, um, that they were going to do it, that you answered my questions. Yes, Appreciate yes, it. they're responsible for the maintenance. Thank you. Mayor, please. You know, in, in, in your opinion, then, when the developer talked about trying to do things in a, in a specific timeline, if that pond that's there right now has debris in it, and it's, it's, it's noticeable, it's not stuff that would have to be dredged, but it's noticeable. When that debris is, is taken out, and I'll, take, I'll, I'll say to the shore area of the pond, that would be hauled away? Yes. Good. And Bill, that was one of your questions. It's just to be sure that nothing flows downhill to your team in the... In the, in the uh, yeah, and I was under the impression they were going to dredge it, which is quite an under... A lot of work. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. But important, there's not that much stuff, but the... the, the the beaver dams that were built and the trees and things that are there that are evident and those would be taken up but we don't want them on the shoreline i didn't think the developer would do that and, and our engineer has said yes they will haul that debris away and then get on with that well he assured that they're going to be keeping an eye on it there'll be a permit yes sir they'll follow up on the permit make sure that everything's done, done correctly and if we have some problems then they'll take care of them so. that's right that's what I need. But thank, thank you. you. All right. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. I see Kathy and Mike Snyder. They wish to speak. We thought we were signing in, but I do. You don't have to speak if you don't want to, but you know, we enjoy getting compliments too. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Snyder, 145 Pond Run Circle. Uh, another issue that, that we want to make sure is clarified is um, what they're proposing for a second means of ingress and egress out of the 
their development. Um, it's a tentative, but we'd like to see that. I think all the residents of, of, of our community like to see that negated and, and have them work out something else on the other side of the development. Anybody address that besides Bill? <laughs> You're okay, but let's get a city person first, okay? Unless, unless you agree. I mean, Liz, and, and what we did was we changed the wording to, to make it a minor adjustment to the uh, plan development, which means it would have to, at that time, whatever would be thought of, would have to go back to the planning commission uh, and go through the process. Yes. Liz Hayden, planning director. Yeah, um, Bill and I had met and we he expressed that there were some concerns from residents that, um, that, the, that there would be this, everything would get built and then we would quickly then put in a secondary access. And I said, that's absolutely not the intent. Um, and then, which it isn't, um, but he's like, so how do we make people feel comfortable with that? And so because we know it's not the intent, what we came up with was that if, public safety decides that there needs to be secondary access, it would be a public hearing so that everyone would be notified and there would be a timeline and there would be public input so that there, that would not happen without some, prior, some public input. Well, it sounds good to all of us. Okay, does that take care of any comments you want to make, Mr. Snyder? Yes. Okay. Kathy Snyder? No, I just signed in. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, that takes care of the water side uh, questions. <coughs> Jesus Reynoso. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, City Council. My name is Jesus Reynoso. I live on Pleasant Avenue. Um, I'm a Hamilton High graduate, um, Miami University regional student. And I just have a couple of questions that I would like to ask the City Council for my research paper if that's okay. Um, so my first question would be, what is your five-year plan to develop the Linden Wall neighborhood? Second, how will those developments impact the residents and local businesses? And third, I believe the increase in business and property value is, are going to negatively impact low-income and long-term residents. So my question is, how will the city, how is the city going to make sure the residents can still call Linden Wall at their home? Okay. Audience of citizens is for usually slightly different type of things, although you could probably call or speak to any one of us, two of us, three of us at a time, and get those answers. I'm not sure if you've talked to anybody in our uh, professional great city team departments. Uh, they're they're going to give you probably fantastic answers, but those are really good questions. And, I'm, and this is for your MU regionals? Yes, sir. Okay. Would, would you like to talk to two or three of us at a time or, or talk to the great city team professionals? Because you're going to get some great answers from them and you're going to get you know, pretty good answers from us too. But I think you're going to want that best answer to develop your, your entire project. Okay. Can anybody, can anybody volunteer to? I, see, I think Tom Vanderhorst. I, I see Liz breaking out her business card already. <laughs> yeah. She's already yeah. very excited okay. about this. Okay. I think the best person you can talk to is Liz Hayden. And then if you want to follow up with us, we'll just say, Liz is correct. <laughs> and, and thank you for coming to this meeting. I mean, uh, you thank really you. are, I, I'm impressed by bringing that to us. Thank you so much. Appreciate your guys' time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Jim Lonneman. Yes. Um, Jim Lonneman, and good evening, Councilman Mayor and Mayor. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I live over on, um, oh, excuse me. I'm talking about this one thing. I live over on Ross Street, or on, on, on um, Franklin. Franklin Street. We come down Ross Street, you can't go, you can't go uh, toward the city. You get to the top of the hill, there's a big pile right in the right hand lane. You can't miss it because the, the other part is the turn lane right there. It's on Ross Avenue? Yeah, it's on Ross Avenue. As you enter Ross Avenue, I mean, off yeah, the Yeah, from, from, coming from Ross Street, you turn on 
G Street and turn around the right, right there. Okay. And also, also the, um, when you turn right there, you can hardly see the other cars coming in your direction, even both lanes. You know, the car, uh, car's pretty far back, so you can't see them coming. Rich, can you check on those potholes, please? And you talk about the new, the new right turn set. No, 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 no. It's just the regular right turn uh, or okay. on G Street. I mean, All right. And the new, new right turn too is kind of, kind of uh, bad itself too. I think Rich can probably come up with something here relatively soon, and he'll get back with uh, with council and those who need to know about your complaint. Well, thank you. Okay. And we don't know. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Andrew Kahn. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, citizens of Hamilton. So, you know, we had an election last night, and obviously I did not come out on top or in the middle, but I wanted to come before you guys and congratulate Susan, Carla, and our vice mayor-elect um, on, on their victories last night. That was probably the most um, honored thing I've ever done was to run for, for an office for the city that, that I love. Um, I, I feel like, and I said it in, in the candidates forum, I feel like, you know, as you, as you go throughout the community, the best thing about Hamilton are, are the people. And I mean, I met some great people um, along the way. And I just, I called each of you last night and um, I heard you passed out a cigar and I didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I just wanted to, to come before everybody and just say, Congratulations. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Okay. Our last audience citizen speaker is Bob Harris. Bob Harris, 429 South 2nd Street president of Southeast Civic Association. I um, like to thank council and this evening I'd like to thank the teams that worked on the cleanup that we just completed. Um, the team leaders uh, were Bob Harris, Joe Lauer, Jim Rick Williams, Adam Helms, and his strike team, and all the other people that volunteered uh, Reverend Andrews, Reverend Mack. We had, um, you know, Marcus uh, on the street. We were doing the job that needed to be done. And I think the consensus was that we needed to have a cleanup and that we need to clean up our city so that the people that are visiting our city can see a clean city. I think it's something that's vital and important to the growth of Hamilton. We want the best reputation that we can get. Um, Chief came out, Boo Kite, he came with his trailer, and we worked. The mayor came out, and we worked. Um, there were some council members that came out and worked. We all had an intricate part of the cleanup, and I like that. In fact, I like to see all of council. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Um, Joe Lauer and myself have made a difference in the second and the fourth ward. We got boots on the ground. Uh, he worked with me every possible minute he had in knocking on doors, greeting people, talking to people, and making sure that people got their issues addressed. I think uh, that you can appreciate what we learned. I also want to congratulate those who got a second term and say this to you, I hope that you consider getting out in the neighborhood and talking to the people and seriously, you, you know, looking at their issues and the things and the problems they may have and bringing it back to council and helping to get something done about it. It was more than just a cleanup. And I think everybody put in a 500% effort, which made the difference. And I say this because somebody asked me, oh, Bob Harris, why do you do this? Well, it's something that I think is needed 
And what you get is you get people talking as they work together. And they hear stories and they talk about things and they give people advice on how to address those issues. So as Nab said to me once, he says, Bob, I want you to bring some ideals. When I bring the ideals, I want you to help me implement, you know, implement those ideals and get it done. Because the effort that's put forward, I can't get that time back. But the results of what we do makes a difference for all the people that live in Hamilton. When we talk about work, live, and play in Hamilton, we want to welcome everybody and make them feel comfortable. So that's my position. And hey, I'm always trying to treat people 12 times better and make sure that I make a difference no matter where I go and no matter who comes to me, I want to give them the same as I respect, you know, for other people and myself. So once again, I want to thank you and uh, I will be back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lauer. God bless you. Thank you, uh, Bob, for your leadership. You want to comment on the cleanup now or later? Oh, I was going to comment. All right, that takes care of the audience of citizens. We now go to the consent agenda. That includes staff reports, caucus reports. I'm going to go to the committee of the whole. That's a time for us to be able to ask questions about some upcoming possible legislation. So is there a motion at this time? So moved. Second. Okay, so there's a motion. The regular meeting will be recessed. The committee will take place. Is that the motion? Yes. Motion made by Council Member Fear, seconded by Vice Mayor Ryan. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing on that motion is carried at 639. Okay, Mr. City Clerk, could you lead us in this? Absolutely. Our first presentation will cover agenda items one and four, and those will be presented by our planning director, Liz Hayden. Good evening, City Council and residents of Hamilton. We have two agenda items coming from Planning Commission tonight. The first is a vacation of a portion of Crawford Avenue. Um, this has came because this is a big process. You've seen this before, um, but it's coming back because Planning Commission recommended moving forward with it. It's a it's 15 feet along Crawford Avenue that's not needed under the new design of Crawford Avenue. We wanted to take a moment. Tom was out there today seeing the progress out there and we wanted to show you some before and after photos from what's been going on out there. Uh, the Third Eye Brewing project has been a six and a half million dollar project. So you see that this is the before for the front and this is the after. But they've also been working on the street this is the before for Crawford Avenue. This is the after. And you can kind of see some of the actual, the where it was, the street was truly destroyed, where the water is um, here. And, but they also are working on, they paved this current gravel parking lot. So this whole area now looks like this. So it's a pretty big transformation for Route 4. Um, and the grand opening is November 17th, and the big grand opening party is the 18th. Yeah, that's right. So I just wanted to show you what, you know, what this vacation actually looks like in, in reality. Do you have any questions on this one? Any questions? I do have a couple comments to make. Um, I hate to call out Rich at a public meeting and embarrass him, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> The developer could not say enough good things about your team, Rich, uh, in particular Matt Newby, Scott Hoover, and Pat Yingling. Uh, this is really kind of unique that we had the developer do the public uh, right-of-way improvements, um, and he killed it. He killed it. Um, and even more importantly, he's going to talk to us about another project very shortly, so you're going to hear more from him. Liz, what's the size of the parking lot? It looks huge. Do you know how many cars? It's it's big. I don't know how many cars is not striped yet, but it's a. I mean, it goes from it's a whole whole block when you think about it because it goes from Crawford to the next street north, which is I'm blanking on the name Howell, I think. Um, so it's it's large. It's a big That's difference. Great. Yeah, 
to say is wow. Any, <laughs> any other questions or comments? Thank you. The second project is a conditional use for residential at 125, 127 Ludlow Street. This is downtown, um, uh, not too far away from, from this building. Um, so you might be surprised why, you know, so, something that's, that are clearly houses would need uh, conditional use for, to make, to have them be residential, but it's right downtown and the zoning district throughout downtown says that residential on the first floor is a conditional use because it is uncommon that a, that it's a just a house you know it's the idea is we don't want a storefront to be turned into an ap an apartment or dwelling unit so that's the why that the why behind this but this building has these buildings have been vacant for for a number of years i believe and so they needed when when the person who bought them start work started renovating they needed to get this approval to take it back to use the dupe their it's two duplexes on one property um, and to be able to use them the way that he wanted um, he needs to get a conditional use approval I did want to kind of highlight that there were two conditions added to the project based on community input at Planning Commission we had neighbors engaged um, they weren't necessarily opposed to the project. They just wanted to make sure that there was proper screening, that there was a nice solid fence, and that there wasn't you know, that they weren't going to be using um, the church parking lot, um, those kinds of things. So we wanted to make sure we highlighted that uh, Planning Commission added some things to address neighbor concerns. Um, and just as a reminder that this is a conditional use, so if you agree with the recommendation from Planning Commission, which is to approve this conditional use request, that this would be the final time that you see this project. It would not go on for a vote. Do you have any questions about this one? Any questions? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next for agenda item number two will be a presentation by our law director, uh, Ms. Letitia Block. Good evening, Mayor Muller, members of City Council and citizens of Hamilton. I'm here to present on uh, the recommendation to approve the renewal of the agreement between the City of Hamilton and Butler County uh, Public Defender Commission. Um, this contract goes back to uh, 2009, where the city contracted with the county uh, to provide representation to indigent defendants in Hamilton Municipal Court. This is in an effort to comply uh, with the provision of the Ohio Revised Code code. Um, in every year uh, that we've had um, the contract with the county, um, with the exception of a few years, the county has proposed um, an increase in compensation. This year, uh, the county is proposing a 3% increase, um, which the amount uh, is a little less than uh, the proposed increase uh, was for last year. So we do one-year contracts every year. If you can go to the next slide, and it'll show um, the amount. So the contract is going to increase uh, from 113,000 um, to 116,000. Um, any questions about this? Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, next up, I'll be presenting the next item for agenda item number three. Hello, Mayor, members of Council. For agenda item number three, this is related to a liquor permit application for uh, 339 Main Street or the future Agave and Rye prop, uh, project and property. This is a D5 liquor permit, which means that this is for uh, beer, wine, and liquor sales to be consumed on property. And uh, when this is, this is a new permit, they still have to go through the appropriate uh, permits and approvals through our city departments, so they still have to get their building permits and licensing as well. Uh, staff recommended that we uh, do not object to this permit application. Just as a quick reminder for what how council can uh, decide on this permit app, this uh, liquor permit application is that we, as a legislative authority, have the right to object to liquor permits and. We've had the opportunity to review this application. We are recommending that there's no objection, and that's the summation of this report. If we have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. 
questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next up for agenda item number five, which is related to uh, retention bonuses to sworn members of the Hamilton Fire Department will be a presentation by our fire chief, Mr. Thomas Eichelberger. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Tom Eichelberger, fire chief. The item that I bring to you tonight is um, another bonus program through the state of Ohio. Um, it is separate from the program I brought to you previously. Um, this uh, grant program is um, comes to us through the Ohio Office of Budget and Management, and the program is the Ohio Ambulance Transportation Program. Little background, it is funded through ARPA, like many of the grants that we're seeing come through right now. Uh, the Office of Budget and Management was appropriated um, $20 million to distribute to um, public and not-for-profit um, or even private ground ambulance transport providers, we qualify for that. Uh, so the Hamilton Fire Department was awarded $22,398.14 to be distributed equally amongst the uh, personnel of the department. If you break that down, um, it is distributed equally at a $214 per employee bonus. And that's, that's the extent of the breakdown on that. Are there any questions? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And then lastly for agenda item number six will be a presentation by our Director of Neighborhoods, Mr. Brandon Sarber. Good evening, Council. Um, earlier this spring, <coughs> A couple of parallel things that happened within the Department of Neighborhoods um, had us change our staffing plan by uh, two FTEs. So we went from six and a half full-time equivalent personnel to four and a half. Um, we lost a couple of key team members, one to an organization outside and one to another department within the city. Uh, and as a result, we passed on the customer first desk responsibilities to uh, Christine Carr's team with customer first. Um, with that change and the loss of the key members of the team, we had to kind of shift around the responsibilities and realign the, the duties within the department. Uh, the person currently performing the duties of neighborhoods coordinator is still in their classification that they held at the customer first desk. Um, so this individual would be moved to the nearest equivalent pay step in this new range in this more uh, appropriate classification for that person, uh, making the budget impact pretty negligible. Uh, so it's the recommendation of staff to increase the pay range for this classification uh, to better reflect these new expectations. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and that concludes our presentations. The motion to command the whole be closed. So moved. Second. Motion by council member Nab, seconded by council member Fear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 651. I'll accept the motion that the regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Pullman, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. And I'll accept the Mr. motion Mayor. at this time. Council Member Pullman? Make a motion that with the exception of the item so noted, council receive the reports of the consent agenda and concur on the re recommendations. Second. Motion by council member Pullman. Second by council member Fear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. And that is at 652. Um, now go to the public hearing section of the agenda. Now such a motion to regular meeting be recessed and the public hearing take place. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Nab. <coughs> Second of Council Member Vaughn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 652. Okay, the public hearing, please. 
A public hearing regarding amending subparagraphs A through E of section 1733.01 of the codified ordinances of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, relative to license fees for food establishments and food service operations and repealing said existing subparagraphs A through E thereof. Okay, now any audience wish to be heard at this public hearing involve anything license fees for food establishments? How many audience wish to be heard at this public hearing involving License fees for food establishments, and I forgot to mention food service operations. And no one signed the book. <clears throat> Anyone on council wish to make a motion or make some comments at this time? Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Ryan. Move that the public hearing be closed. Second. Second. Yeah. Motion by Vice Mayor Ryan, seconded by Council Member Fear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none. That motion is carried at 653. I'll the motion for regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Council Member Fear. Seconded by Vice Mayor Ryan. Roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted. 7 0. Now go to Council Actions pertaining to legislative items, and I'll accept the motion. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Pullman? I move that a note be made upon the minutes that each member of council was furnished a printed copy of each item of legislation prior to its being considered at this meeting. Motion by council member Pullman, seconded by council member Fear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. We now go to pending legislation, agenda item number eight, second reading of an ordinance involving the 2023 replacement pages to the codified ordinances. An ordinance approving, adopting, and enacting the 2023 replacement pages to the codified ordinances of Hamilton, Ohio, 1998, and repealing matters in conflict therewith, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, seconded by Council Member Lauer. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller. Yes. Warrants adopted. 7 0. We now go to agenda item number 9, which is a second reading of the license fee issue for food establishments uh, and food service operations. An ordinance amending subparagraphs A through E of section 1733.01 of the codified ordinances of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, relative to, li to license fees for food establishments and food service operations, and repealing said existing subparagraphs A through E thereof. Second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Nab. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Council Member Nab, second by Council Member Pullman. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted. 7 0. Go for agenda item number 10, second reading of an emergency ordinance involving uh, Water Code Drive POK communities. An emergency ordinance authorizing and declaring the city manager to execute a sound development agreement and related actions related to 27.49 acres of certain real property located at Water Cove Drive, parcel number P64111340017, PLK Communities LLC Developer, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, seconded by Council Member Fear. Discussion, comments on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Abstain. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted 6 to 0 with 1 abstention. We go to agenda item number 11, second reading ordinance involving uh, changing the zoning properties, East End and Middle Wall neighborhoods. An ordinance amending the City of Hamilton Zoning Ordinance number 7503 by changing the zoning of properties located in the East End and Lindenwald neighborhoods zoning map, changing the zoning of on the area in question from a mixture of industrial, business, and residential zoning to TN, traditional neighborhood zoning, for all properties in the area, except for a specific property, 425 Butler Street, to DT1 High Street form pace zoning, and retaining the zoning of 956 Mosler Avenue, rear 951 Corliss Avenue, and 1732 Grand Boulevard, Save Hamilton applicant, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Pullman. Make a motion that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Pullman, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Discussion, comments? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. 
Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Ordinance adopted. 7 0. We go to agenda item number 12, second leave emergency ordinance involving the final plan and development plan for 12 Water Cove. Sure. An emergency ordinance approving the preliminary and final plan to develop. Final plan development plan for 12 Water Cove Drive to allow development of the property as 20 multifamily apartment buildings and 272 dwelling units on property zoned RPD residential plan development with three variances Nicholas P. Lingenfelter, PLK Communities applicant, second reading. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman. Oh, Councilmember yeah. Nab, I'm sorry. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Councilmember Nab, second by Councilmember Pullman. Discussion or comments on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Stain. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Warrants adopted, six to zero with one abstention. Now go to new legislation. Then item number 13, first reading of an ordinance involving 801 South 8th Street. An ordinance approving the right-of-way dedication plat for part lot 28594, 801 South 8th Street, located at Walnut Street and Hanover Street, 4th Ward, City of Hamilton applicant, first reading. Here we go to agenda item number 14 now. First reading of an ordinance involving uh, reassigning a pay range. An ordinance amending and supplementing Schedule A of the City's Classification and Compensation Plan at set forth in Emergency Ordinance Number EOR 2022-12-126, adopted December, to four, December 14th, 2022, as amended from time to time, by reassigning the pay range for the Assistant to the City Manager Classification at first reading. Okay. So Agenda Item Number 15, Resolution uh, for Tax Year 2023, being collected in 2024. A resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies for the tax year 2023 collected in 2024 and certifying them to the Auditor of Butler County, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Second. Councilmember Vaughn, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Comments or discussions on this one? Roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. Now go to agenda item number 16. Resolution supporting a SMART grant. Directed the city manager to sign all necessary documents. A resolution ratifying and supporting the filing of a grant application for the strengthening mobility and revolutionizing transportation smart grant program and authorizing and directing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to accept and receive said grant funds. Mr. Mayor. Council Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that the resolution be adopted. Second. Council Member Pullman, seconded by Vice Mayor Ryan. Comments? Hearing none, roll call vote please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. We now go to agenda item number 17, which is a resolution declaring November 2023 as Veterans Month in the city of Hamilton. A resolution declaring the month of November 2023 as Veterans Month in the city of Hamilton, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman? I'll make a motion that that resolution be adopted. Second. Mr. Councilmember Pullman, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Any discussion on this? A lot of events going on this month and fundraisers for various veterans' events. Casual Pints got a special fundraiser. They're also raising money, people are, for the Butler County Veterans Wall. We just had our Hall of Fame, is that correct, Mr. Nab? That is Mr. correct. Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes. Uh, not Nab and Councilmember uh, Pullman, who were both there. Any additions to that at all? Comments? If not, roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Flower? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. We now go to agenda item number 18, a resolution regarding Bob Harris Way. A resolution declaring South 2nd Street be given the honorary name of Bob Harris Way in tribute to Bob Muduquan Harris. Mayor. Council Member Fear. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion made by Council Member Fear, seconded by Council Member Lauer. And I believe Council Member Lauer would like to 
read part of that resolution at this time. I left one in front of your desk. We already have one. Yes, sir. Underneath it. One second, we'll get there. Whereas Hamilton City Council adopted ordinance number OR 2021-11106 at a regular meeting held on November 17th, 2021, establishing a policy and application process for the honorific renaming of the city streets and facilities. And whereas requirements for an honorific name of, the, of a city street or city facility must include uh, contributions such as cultural, humanitarian, educational, uh, intellectual, political, scientific, no. historical, and military achievement. Where, whereas Bob Mudu Kwan Harris has, has committed his life to studying and practicing karate, which has led to national and world level achievements. And whereas he can competed in national and world stage in karate in the late 70s and the early 80s with two world championship titles by knockout and whereas he was inducted into the National Martial Arts Hall of Fame in 1980 and the National Black Belt Karate Association Hall of Fame in 1992. Whereas since then he was also served as MBBKA's chairman of the board and the chairman of the MBBKA Grand Masters, and whereas Bob Harris also owns a karate dojo, dojo and photography studio on South 2nd Street, and whereas he also served as community teaching karate at Booker T. Washington Community Center and the YMCA's in the area. Whereas Bob Harris has also served on multiple Hamilton boards and commissions and still serves as president of the Southeast Civic Association. And whereas the requested street, the honorific renaming of South 2nd Street, which shows a clear geographical relationship to Bob Harris, his career in karate, and his humanitarian efforts in the, review, in the Riverview neighborhood. And whereas the council desires to declare the honorific name, renaming of South 2nd Street to Pershing Avenue. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city, of, by the council of the city of Hamilton, Ohio, South 2nd Street, from High Street to Pershing Avenue, Knightsbridge, be given the honorary name of Bob Harris Way in, con in, in tribute to Bob Mudu Kwan Harris for his national and international success as a competitor in, kar in karate, as well as his humanitarian efforts in the Riverview neighborhood. The 2nd Street will rename the official street name description. Bob Harris, you are here, correct, today? Again? Mm -hmm. Would you stand up so we can, we'll stand up so we can give you a round of applause, okay? <laughs> Any other comments about the resolution? And there'll be a sign raising type of uh, event, and that'll be set up, and you and your family be there, and it'll be a, be a great day. Mr. Mayor. Please. Mr. Harris, um, in my short time as city council, as a city council member, I want you, I want you to understand this. I have none of your accomplishments throughout um, your career in karate. Um, however, um, I think that what I appreciate most is what I have learned from you in these two years. Your ability to lead your community um, relentlessly. Um, we need people like Bob Harris and, and neighborhoods to fight to make those neighborhoods better. I respect you for everything that I have learned from you and everything that you have done for your community. And may there be many more years that you and I work together on whatever it is that, that you feel the need we take care of. Thank you, Bob Harris, for bringing us to Bob Harris Way. Okay. There's no other comments. Let's do a roll call vote on that. Coleman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7-0. So the clerk, can you make sure that he gets a copy of this resolution once it's um, um, signed and properly
filed away. So you'll get a copy of the resolution, Bob. Okay? Absolutely. Okay. And number 19. Resolution. A resolution declaring a non-arterial section of Central Avenue be given the honorary name of Catherine Rumpf, Rumpf Street in tribute to Catherine Rumpf Cole. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Knapp. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Second. Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Knapp, seconded by Vice Mayor Ryan. Uh, I believe Carla Fear is going to now read parts of the uh, Catherine Rumpf Street resolution. Catherine, it is my pleasure to be able to talk about the things you've done for this. And just to go over a little bit, the, for those that don't know, the criteria for us to name streets is that the honoree has given extraordinary service to the city and to the community. The honoree contributed outstanding civil, civic service to the city for a minimum period of 10 years. No other individual now living has or is likely to have greater public support for being honored and or the honoree has attained national or international prominence and achievement. In Catherine's time that she has given to the city of Hamilton, she has made contributions by introducing small business incubator to the Chamber of Commerce. She has suggested the name Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard during the State Route 127 rerouting project. She also introduced a no smoking policy in council chambers prior to smoking laws. And she also served on boards and commissions such as co-chair of Taste of Gospel, Southeast Civic Association, Booker T. Washington Community Center, the Advisory Board of Society Bank, and more. Whereas, Ms. Rumpf has also received honors including the BTW Hall of Fame Award, WMOH Woman of the Day Award, Outstand and Outstanding Women of Achievement Award. Also, 1989 Who's Who in Government. Whereas the request, the requested street to be renamed is a non-arterial -art section of Central Avenue between South 2nd Street and Hanover Street, which shows a clear geographical relationship to Ms. Rumpf and her involvement with the city, serving the Riverview neighborhoods and in Riverview neighborhood. So thank you so much for everything you've done that you brought to light before people were bringing things to light. So thank you for that. Any other comments? I want to say thank you, uh, Catherine, because you and I had a lengthy discussion about uh, your travels and your national prominence going to Washington, D.C., uh, representing our city. So any other comments at all? All right. Roll yeah. call vote on. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, please. Ms. Trump, um, I've been, I've had the privilege of talking with you on several occasions. It is such a pleasure. You are such a strong leader for your community. I want you to know that I feel the most important thing that you have done is be a role model for our females in this community, especially the Riverview neighborhood. It is important that, that our young ladies in that neighborhood see you visibly. Come to, come to, I'm asking you to please come to Garfield at some point and speak to some of our classes. Our young females, from the Riverview as well as other neighborhoods need to see you and need to understand the importance of being active in their communities. Okay, let's, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and do the vote, then you can stand up and we're gonna clap for you too. So <laughs> then, let's get this vote done so it's official. Okay, we got a first, we got a second. Roll call please, sir. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted. 7 0. Would you please stand now, Catherine Rumpf, and accept our applause? I didn't know anything about politics. 
but I was passing my uh, petition around, and one of my friends said, how much does it pay? And I said, you know, I don't know. I'm just doing it for the city. So that is the answer to what I've done. I did it all for the city. Thank you, Catherine. You were not a politician, you were a public servant and still are a public servant. Okay, that takes care of number 19. We go to number 20, resolution involving uh, Roger Troutman Street. A resolution declaring Washington Street to be given the honorary name of Roger Troutman Street in tribute to Roger Troutman. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman. Make a motion that the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion made by uh, Councilmember Pullman, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. All right, I'm going to read a little bit about Roger Troutman, and you'll learn why in just a minute. He was born and raised in Hamilton, Ohio, on Washington Street. Uh, he practiced music in his family's garage. Uh, he played several bands, including the band that played at my high school prom. Uh, Roger and the Human Body was before Zap. And soon after that, he did reach the prominence that, that I'm going to go to in um, just a second. He's well known, I think maybe invented the talk box, which you have heard many groups use. Um, in the late 1970s, early 1980s is when he formed uh, the band Zap. And he was actually discovered by George Clinton and Bootsy Collins, and he signed a contract with Warner Brother Records. Uh, his debut album topped the Billboard top R&B hip hop albums, uh, certified gold. Uh, he released four more albums, uh, had a successful solo career. And part of the whereas is his funk style is also notable in the West Coast hip hop in the 1990s, most notably Tupac's California Love, which received platinum certification. Uh, the honorary rename is of Washington Street, because uh, that's where he was born. And um, he grew up in Hamilton. Uh, he did pass away, so this is a uh, memory of, of the achievements of Roger Troutman. And it's his tribute to him for his cultural contributions to funk and hip hop music. Any other comments about Roger Troutman? Okay. Uh, First or second, roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. And I'm, I'm going to contact the uh, Troutman family. They used to have a, a family reunion here almost every year in the city of Hamilton. And Zap Band played at uh, River's Edge one year, the same weekend that they had that particular family reunion. And the family was really pleased to have that playing basically at their family reunion. And that was a, a tremendous concert. So we're going to find out. I mean, most of the Trout family, Trout family is up in Dayton. So, all right. That takes us to uh, resolution number 21. If you want to read that into the record, Mr. City Clerk, please. Sure. And to be clear, I wanted to make sure that council has, uh, I gave you an updated copy of the resolution. So I have the, the utmost current title right here. Uh, so it's a resolution declaring the Great Miami River Recreational Trail within the city of ha the city limits of the city of Hamilton, Ohio, uh, have the honorary name of Dave Blue Trail in tribute to David L. Blue. Okay, so it's going to be saying Dave Blue Trail. Is that correct. correct? Okay. All righty. Um, you read the resolution correct already. So, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, there's a motion that the resolution be adopted by Council Member Vaughn. Seconded by Council Member Lauer. And please, Susan Vaughn, if you would, read, uh, Council Member Vaughn, please read parts of that uh, resolution. All right, thank you so much. It's my honor to be able to read this uh, for Dave. I know uh, Dave Ballou is watching on TV Hamilton this evening. He religiously watches city council meetings, and I wish he could be here with us tonight, but he will see this. So, um, Whereas Dave Ballou, born in Falmouth, Kentucky, and moved to Hamilton, Ohio with his family in 1942, grew up through the Hamilton school system and returned to the city after graduating from William & Mary College. Dave had a successful career working for the Beckett Paper Company and began a second career of community involvement. Through 
his service, Dave was a driving force behind multiple community projects, including, but not limited to, the Butler County Soldier, Sailor, and Pioneer Monument restoration, initiating the annual successful auction for the Boys and Girls Club and the Great Miami River Recreational Trail. Dave also served on the Board of Trustees of the Hamilton Community Foundation from 1961 to 1994 and from 1995 to 2003, which includes two terms as board president and the first and only trustee emeritus. Dave Ballou has often been called Mr. Hamilton for his years of dedication and leadership to the greater Hamilton community. He is the first recipient of the Hamilton Community Foundation's Dave Ballou Legacy Award. Whereas the requested honorific renaming is the entire length of the Great Miami River Recreational Trail within the city limits of Hamilton, Ohio, which show a clear geographic relationship to Dave L. David L. Ballou, as this was a major project that he supported. Whereas council desires that the Great Miami River Recreational Trail within the city limits of Hamilton, Ohio, be given the honorary name of Dave Ballou Trail. Any other comments at this time? I know that, Mr. Mayor, that um, when the naming, or not the naming, when the trail was being created, this was an extensive process that Dave Ballou stood behind. It went all the way to the Supreme Court before a final decision was made. And so I think uh, that's unbelievable. I followed all of that as it was happening. And uh, I just can't say enough for the dedication that Dave Ballou has had for this city and honorary, honorarily naming this trail after him is exactly the right thing we need to do. So thank you so much to Dave Ballou for all that he's done. Well said, and I think we'd all say the same. Thing. Ditto, Mr. Hamilton. Yes. We had a first and a second. If there's no other comments. Uh, roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. Can we now go to the audience of acting city manager? Do we have anything to say? This I do not have anything this evening. Okay. Audience city council. Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Lauer, please. Uh, we performed a uh, cleanup in the uh, in the Riverview neighborhood. Um, it was very important. Uh, many people participated, and I was amazed at our city team for how they jumped right in. Um, Mark Oliver did a great job. Um, Adam Helms did a great job putting it together. Jim Williams and his team with Dan Arthur did a great job. Um, however, one thing that, that I want to make sure that we recognize is that we have a system now in Hamilton, the 311 system, and I think it's important that we promote that as much as possible. It is year-round, and hopefully um, we can get the word out, and I, I would like to do another walk with Bob Harris in Hamilton um, to get the word out to about our 311 system. Um, I think it's important that we minimize um, minimize stuff piling up and it's sitting there for years. And we need to use this to jumpstart that 311 system again to make sure that our city looks nice year round. You said walk in Hamilton because he took you to Fairfield. Yeah, I'm okay. not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Council Member Knapp. You're Mary, you were kind enough to mention our, our Veterans Hall of Fame this past Sunday, but uh, tonight the honor that we created in resolution number 17 on our agenda was to name uh, November uh, Veterans Month in our city recognition of that. I served in the Vietnam War. Uh, I came home from the war and moved to Hamilton six years later in 1977. Hamilton has become my home. Uh, I'm, I'm a proud veteran. Uh, I'm also proud of the fact that uh, five years ago, we created the Veterans, uh, the City of Hamilton Veterans Hall of Fame. This past Sunday, we honored 19 new honorees to uh, join the Hall of Fame. 
uh, men and women, uh, some posthumously, uh, some with us today, uh, some from all over the country that, that came to, to visit with us from California, from Virginia, from Massachusetts, uh, people that were here, there were 280 of us that celebrated these, these fine men and women that we were able to honor uh, this past Sunday. So the Hall of Fame will grow continuously. We ask our citizens to get in touch with the mayor and I. We happen to serve on that committee, uh, but to get in touch, in, there is an application process. We do not know all the stories of the proud people that served our country and, and made Hamilton a better place uh, for, for having been here in, in their time. Uh, we also last year created the Hamilton Hometown Hero Veterans Banners Program. That kicked off last Wednesday. The, the application process is open through the end of March of 2024 to create more banners uh, for the city of Hamilton. So uh, you, can, you can go online to download a, a, a copy of our banner application uh, through the city website, the Chamber of Commerce website, or the Hamilton Community Foundation website. We also have hard copies here in the city uh, area of customer service so to be able to pick up a, a two-page application and then be able to fill out the application accordingly and have a banner made for you, for your loved one, for someone that's either with us today or served our, our, uh, our country honorably. We have a spe special designation area for those killed in, in action, those soldiers that gave our lives for our country. So we don't take this lightly. It's an honor to be able to serve on those two committees. As I mentioned, Mayor Moeller and other city members, there are five or six of us that serve on those committees. So it's a small, uh, dedicated volunteer group. But we invite you all, uh, th those listening, those here in the audience with us tonight, to be able to honor a loved one uh, with a banner. Those banners will be installed uh, next April or early May. We'll have a dedication on Armed Forces Day in May at Armstead Park at the corner of Main and D Street to celebrate the new banners. We have 126 banners right now in Hamilton. Those will be taken down next week, cleaned by the, the Naval ROTC cadets at Hamilton High School, dried, rolled up and put in bins, and those will be then replaced into Hamilton along with the new banners that will be introduced next April and May. So again, thank you for the honor uh, that we have in Hamilton of recognizing our veterans and those who served our country, our country so proudly. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on council? Mr. Mayor. House Mayor Pullman. <laughs> I had two things actually because when you brought that up I did get to go to that second year I went to it and I, and I don't want to miss it because there's a lot of great stories there it actually uh, boy it just really enlightens you on what these people have done for our country and it's a it's a great it's getting bigger so yes, you, you may have to find a bigger place but it's uh, it's just a great ceremony to go to and I thank you for inviting me to it so um, a lot of good moments there thank you both years uh, the second thing is I want to thank everybody in the city of Hamilton Ohio for um, having the faith to uh, bring me back to City Council uh, it was a long day yesterday um, but I appreciate it and especially getting vice mayor again I I, um, I, I really look to continue my journey here um, I feel I haven't done enough yet, so I really look forward to the next four years. And I want to congratulate Susan, and I want to congr congratulate Carla. Welcome back. And I want to say to Andy Kahn, you know, you won because you won by, um, you learned a lot on it. You, like you said, you met a lot of people. And I think uh, you win by, it takes a lot of, uh, takes a lot of guts to come after this job. And it's, uh, I wish more people would, you know, just get involved with the city. So it takes a special person to do that. So I think you win no matter what. So um, just keep digging. And uh, thank you again. Anyone else on council? I want to take about a minute and a half and give an update on what's going on itself. I talked to Jeff Diver recently. They've got a money management coach now where they work one-on-one -on -one with someone to uh, have to learn financial literacy, but also to improve their credit scores. 26 people have improved their uh, their credit scores and their financial literacy through self. 
Self also has a car repair program I think Councilmember Pullman was involved in setting up. Self is helping clients who have car repairs uh, to get done in order to keep a job. So you fix the car, they get to keep their job basically because otherwise they couldn't get to work. They've worked for three car repair shops in Butler County and repaired 65 cars that have been influential and so important in getting people to work. Uh, neighbors who care, the renovations that Self has been doing on homes in, in Hamilton and Middletown, they're being rehabilitated for low to moderate income families. And they've rehabbed eight homes since 2016. Lastly, Build Up Academy. Uh, Self has a Build Up Academy uh, where young people can, can learn construction skills and that they had a unique construction training program at the Butler County Juvenile Rehabilitation Facility. You know that where that is, that's youngsters who are serving, um, I guess what we'll call it rehabilitation for making mistakes, for making some poor choices. But Build Up Academy through self is teaching young people uh, there's a different path than the path that they were on. And uh, so they're learning construction skills, possibility of getting uh, certifications while they're in the Public County Juvenile Rehab Facility. I want to congratulate yourself, at least in those areas, and, and multiple areas, but money management, car repair, low to moderate income housing, uh, teaching young people a different path for a job. That's what self does. I just want to congratulate them and uh, say thank you to self. Great, All right. Great organization. Yep. All right. Anyone else on council have anything they wish to share with the audience or with each other? All right. Now, regarding executive session, City Council will be having an executive session. Offset the motion of the Council recess to regular meeting and convene an executive session for the purpose of considering uh, appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demolition, 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 or compensation of public employee or official. So it's got to do with personnel employment matters. The motion may go to executive session for that stated purpose. So moved. Second. Okay, motion from Council Member Vaughn, second by Vice Mayor. Ryan, um, so motion was made by Council Member Bond, I believe, seconded by Vice Mayor Ryan. Is that correct? I just want to make sure I got that correct. Yes, sir. Okay, roll call vote on that motion, please. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. Executive session at 7 30. We'll be doing it behind us here. Executive session, we'll call it executive session hearing room. We'll come out just to adjourn the regular meeting. So thank you all for being here.